Hey guys, Henry here again, and welcome back to our channel and to another episode of Apparel Academy. Have you ever wanted to start an embroidery business but were kind of intimidated by what it would take to ramp up and learn the machine? Well, I'm here to tell you about some training 101 tips and what to look for before purchasing an embroidery machine and getting into the embroidery industry so that you can be well prepared and set the proper expectations to grow with your machine. So I generally break down the type of people that are getting into the embroidery business into beginners and people that have done this before. Those beginners are the people in the category of having no embroidery or sewing experience in the past and they're interested in getting started in this business and start their own apparel line or just starting their home business from the garage. Then you have the veterans who are more experienced in the industry, either with a single needle machine that they've used in the past or have some kind of sewing experience for many years, or they have another machine, a multi-needle machine or even a multi-head machine, and now looking to scale up their business. Many people have this wrong notion that if you've done this before, if you've done embroidery or have some background with embroidery and sewing, that you don't have to learn the new machine you purchase. While it may be true that the embroidery concepts that you've learned in the past can all apply to this new machine that you've purchased, it still doesn't take away from the fact that you need to learn this new machine whether you've purchased a new machine of a different brand or you have purchased a newer model of the same brand. This is because even newer models within the same brand have different nuances and upgrades that you might have to learn and be able to climb that learning curve so that you can know how to operate your, your machine efficiently. And especially if you're crossing over into a new brand of commercial embroidery machine, it is definitely important to learn that new machine because there might be nuances that you might not be familiar with or controls and settings that you are not familiar with to be able to operate your machine efficiently. So now that we have that out of the way, that even if you're an experienced embroidery learning a new machine is still very critical. Let's move on to what it takes for beginners to be able to ramp up and climb that learning curve. Let me start off by saying that embroidery is not plug and play. This is not a TV or a fridge that you purchase off the shelf and are able to just operate. It is a craft and with a commercial machine, there's a certain level of expectation from the operator side for you to operate the machine in an efficient way. Because you're dealing with actual threads and blank garments and there's a lot of moving pieces, you have to make sure that every part of the process is on point to be able to operate your embroidery shop efficiently. So many times for beginners, it's a lot more difficult to climb that learning curve because they have no past experience in either embroidery or sewing. So just learning the terminology is a first step to get them started. Know what threads are and what types of weight of thread is best suitable for what types of projects. Know what a bobbin is and how to wind it properly. All of those things are the essentials to even get started in this business. I cannot stress the importance of training and ongoing education, especially for beginners with no background in this business. It's also the practice day in and day out in the grind and making these orders that you will learn from these trial and error and along with our help, able to climb that learning curve and become an expert. And trust me, even some of the most experienced experts have messed up every now and then especially when they overlook something small or they overlook a particular detail or just not paying attention. So don't feel discouraged if you're a new embroiderer and feel that this is too intimidating because this is something that I hear a lot. People always ask, is it hard to learn the machine? Is it hard to get started in this business? And the answer is, it really depends. It depends on your capacity to learn, your skill set, how quickly you learn, how much time you have to set aside every single day to practice and perfect the craft. So with that said, I'm actually going to wrap rapid fire a series of questions that a lot of people ask about the training process, what it takes for beginners to ramp up and climb that learning curve. And I'll kind of answer those frequently asked questions so that you too, when you're deciding on which embroidery machine company to go with, you can make that decision for yourself with this information. Ask if training is included with your machine purchase. Many times companies will charge you extra for additional training if you don't ask that question. If you don't clarify that, you might run into a situation where the company actually charges you for training on the machine you've purchased. For example, I know some other companies that will charge you upwards of $950 for just two hours of training with your technicians. This is important to know because you wanna know whether you have that budget for that training or will you be able to get ramped up without that training if you're without that budget. This is important to know because you wanna know 
if you need to build in that budget to your overall purchase, or whether you're comfortable just doing research on your own and learning the machine on your own. Generally, if you're a beginner and have no prior experience in embroidery or sewing, I would definitely not recommend to learn the machine on your own. Going through a formal structured training process is critical for any beginner getting started in this industry. And because we feel that training and ongoing education is so important in this industry, that's why we offer free training to anybody that purchased a Recoma machine. This is actually something that's very rarely offered from a lot of other embroidery machine brands. While here at Recoma, we actually offer training videos and give, give you a glimpse into what it's like to operate and own a machine before you actually have to purchase. If you're interested to check out what training videos we offer before your purchase and what our actual customers go through in their pre-training after they purchase their machine to get ready for their live training, you can check out the link that I put in the description below so that you can actually watch those videos and get a feel for what it's like to be a Recoma customer. Next, what does the training actually entail? This is a question that we get a lot here. And I'm sure that a lot of you have that question on your mind. So in our case, our training captures everything to get you started from knowing how to thread the machine, knowing how to hoop your garments, knowing how to operate your control panel and the ongoing maintenance that's required to keep your machine running. This initial training typically lasts between four to five hours and is enough of a time to kind of get you started on your very first project. We really take you step by step from beginning to end on how to do a flat item as well as a cap. Now, one note that I would make here is that this is the training to get you started. There's obviously a lot to learn about embroidery and it's impossible to cover everything in four to five hours. That's why ongoing education is so important and we offer these more advanced classes and ongoing webinars and seminars to make sure that we cover specific topics that people are interested in and to make sure they get more advanced knowledge about their machine. Next, others are interested to know whether the training is one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting or whether it's online or in person. Now with Recoma, all of our single head machines get free online training in a group setting. And multi-head machine purchases of two heads and up actually get an on-site training at your location. The on-site training at your location is also for two days for a multi-head because there's a lot more to cover. Now with that said, it's not to say that one-on-one -on -one training or in-person training is not available. For example, we have a lot of customers that come to our facility on-site and train here in our headquarters. One-on-one -on -one tailored training at your location is also available for an fee. So we really give a wide range of training selections for people to choose from. If you're the type of person that can excel in a group training setting, then the online training that comes free with our machines can be a good option for you. You don't have to travel and you can be in the comfort of your own home and be able to watch and follow along with a live training and ask questions. However, if you feel that one-on-one -on -one training and a more dedicated and tailored approach is more suitable for your needs, you can also add that on to your purchase. So again, all of those options are available at your disposal to be able to pick and choose from on what best suits your needs. If you're interested to learn more about the trainings that we offer and what's included in those trainings, you can actually go to the link that I've put in the description below and check it out there. Next question here is, what are some of the common questions that you should be asking during your training? Now, one thing I would recommend is to make sure you come prepared to your training, and that's precisely why here at Recoma we have a pre-training process to get people up to speed and prepared on the fundamentals and get everything set up before their actual training date. This is important because given the initial training is only four to five hours, you wanna be able to maximize that time and ask tailored questions. So what exactly are some of those questions that you need to ask to make sure you maximize the training time? You wanna make sure that you ask where are the oiling spots, where do I need to maintain the machine, where do I need to clean now, and in what time frame? I will tell you this, you'll be surprised that something as simple as maintenance, a lot of people overlook that point. I've heard horror stories from people where they haven't oiled their rotary hook or their machine for six months after they got it, and they're hearing different noises or loud noises coming from, from their machine and they're wondering why. The machine is just like a car. If you maintain it well and you oil it well and you do all the proper steps to make sure it's running smoothly, it's gonna last you for years and years. Other things that you should probably ask are the type of materials is, such as backing, or needles that are used for certain materials. Those are what I consider the soft skills in embroidery that's beyond the actual control panel operations. Because guess what? The control panel operations is just a series of steps. And as long as you do those enough times with repetition, you're gonna get used to entering those colors or punching the right keys to make embroidery happen. However, the soft skills of knowing what needles to use, what threads to use, what are the different weights of thread and needle sizes and backing types for different types of garments, those combinations of things could take years to master. 
Luckily, to help you along that learning process, we've actually created what's called the Ultimate Embroidery Cheat Sheet, where it has the top 50 most popular types of fabrics and what backing, needles, and threads to use to achieve the best quality results. You can actually download that in the description below if you're interested. Finally, another category of important questions to ask during your training is how to do some of the basic troubleshooting. For example, during any embroidery process, whether you're a beginner or you're a 20-year veteran, you're going to run into thread breaks. That's just the nature of embroidery because we're dealing with actual threads and they could be flimsy or there's a lot of factors that could go into why a thread break occurs. So it's important to ask those questions in your training process to make sure that you know the proper steps to troubleshoot a simple issue such as a thread break. And again, to help you along with that process, we've actually created a guide and a flow chart that actually shows you what to look for in a thread break and different types of thread breaks that could occur and how to solve those. All right, guys, so I hope you found this information helpful. Finally, I want to remind you to join our free Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. There's now over 18,000 embroiderers and custom apparel decorators in there sharing tips, tricks, and their knowledge of the craft. So you can join the conversation there. I've actually put the link to that group in the description below, so feel free to join there. I'm actually very active in there myself, answering questions and helping out others. So hope to chat with you there. Also, if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram, at RecomaHQ. Make sure to follow us there. We post there daily, so you can be a part of that conversation there and check out the latest in the world of custom apparel. And like always, thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time. <laughs>